Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And this week, joining us from Germany is Peter Müller. Hey, Peter. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. It's nice. Absolutely. So uh, Peter is an organizational agile coach in a large German company. He accompanies Scrum Masters, product owners and developers in a learning and mentoring program recognized by the Scrum Alliance. He's a solution focused coach and also a trainer for nonviolent communication, which is a topic that has been discussed several times here on the podcast. He's also the co-host of the Meetup Supervision for Agile Professionals. Uh, Peter, that was a short intro. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master? Yeah, pleasure. Well, um, actually, for about now, almost 15 years or so, I'm um, I'm working as a kind of um, person who likes to work with people and to um, accompany them in their growing path yeah so um so what i really like is to 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 see them grow to help them find new options and stuff like that and actually almost 15 years ago um, a colleague of mine approached me and told me a story about her team and um, her team was suffering from from um, they were not really delivering and the customers were not happy and they were not happy and stuff like that um, so they 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 think of or they thought of um, using something else which they called Scrum um, because um, it seems to provide a different approach on how to interact with customers um, and to find a way to to produce something which is really valuable. And um, she told me that she will take over the role of a Scrum master. And while she did that, we were talking about or we were discussing things and we were exchanging things. And so I more and more get uh, get more about the Scrum Master role out of the Scrum Master role and thought, hey, Peter, this is what I would like to do, actually. And um, so it was not short after that, that uh, a new team comes up and the company says, yes, we need to become more agile, as we already know, uh, all know of um, large companies, they always want to become more agile. Um, and so I take, took over a uh, role of Scrum Master. And since then, I actually worked in that matter in this in the environment, um, either as a Scrum Master or now as an Agile coach. Yeah. Uh, many of us get kind of <laughs> called, beaten yeah. by the Scrum Master bug. Uh, and uh, uh, I guess this is also because we see the potential that uh, that role can have to transform how we work and how we collaborate. Exactly. Uh, is that what what uh, what stuck with you from that conversation with your colleague? Yes, exactly. It is actually about um, the relationship we need to to create in order to to have a productive um, working environment, and that this is not just the team itself, but it also spans across the customers, the stakeholders, and even the whole organization. And this is what is fascinating for me. Absolutely. And we'll, I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about that during this week. And because <laughs> okay. today is Monday, we talk about the fail Monday, the fail story, of course. Uh, we all do. Uh, we all yeah. fail. I fail. Everybody goes through difficult moments. So yeah. uh, the important thing, of course, is to explore that with the curiosity to learn what can we do differently. So yeah. let's dive into that. Uh, Peter, tell us a story of a moment where you as a Scrum Master, you did your best, but the best at that time just wasn't good enough. Tell us the story first. We'll yeah. dive into the takeaways and lessons learned later on, but tell us the story first. Okay. So actually it was uh, not long ago, um, just, uh, I think, uh, three years or something. Um, and in that moment, I, I took over a team which was uh, rather big. So we had, um, I think, eight to nine people already uh, in the team. And in the daily, also people from the outside joined. So stakeholders uh, like requirements analysis or um, some other business people and something. And we all stand in, in such, such a circle around our board, which was at these times still on a, on a wall. Uh, with sticky notes and stuff 
Um, and then they start to, to, to do the traditional way, say, of, of a daily. So each one, one after another, explains what they were doing, doing and um, where they have problems or stuff. And it also includes then the stakeholders, those not in the team. So we had a mix of first person talks to topic A, then second person talks about topic B, and then a stakeholder from the outside explains about something different. Um, and I came to the conclusion, well, this is not good enough. So let's let's change the daily. And I just um, just um, said, let's change it in this way that we first hear first the, the, the team and we go by the stories from top to bottom, what we see on the on our board. So we have, um, say, a story focused or item focused um, daily first. The team says, well, yes, OK, we can try. And um, so we did it, say, um, one to two sprints. But after that, they fall back to the old to the old habit because they actually don't see a problem in this kind of daily which they had. They were very fine with this. Everybody was hurt. It was fine that it was mixed and stuff like that. And here, from my perspective, I failed. Um, because I changed some, something which actually was not a, bro a, a problem for them. See? Yeah, so that's and, and that's definitely something that we, especially when we have more experience, right? Because there's the mistakes that we do when we don't have much experience, mm -hmm. but then there's also the mistakes we do when we have a lot of experience. Uh, we maybe jump to conclusions. <laughs> maybe yes. that's one of the things. Exactly, and that's my message. If if I can, if I have one message to this, I, I said, yes. Uh, so don't jump to conclusions too early. Listen to listen to the to the team, and and don't fix what is not broken. Yeah, which is a very very nice principle. So don't fix what is not broken. Actually, from the solution focused world, where you say, um, listen to your persons, listen to the teams, try to understand where they do they have issues, and then solve these issues and that was what i was going to say uh because from my mind one way for us especially when we are experienced one way for us to avoid this uh trying to jump into conclusions or eventually accidentally jumping into conclusions mm -hmm. is to start always with the problem that the team already knows they have yes and yes. they always have something, right? Like that the, there's no team in the world that thinks that there are no problems. Now, sometimes teams may think that the problems are outside mm -hmm. and that's okay because we will eventually figure out how that interacts with the, with the team dynamics and so on. But uh, uh, it, it really is much more productive for us as Scrum Masters to actually listen to what they already want to fix. Yes, and um, here comes another point, don't be, in a rush to find out. So, so take your time to find out what really the problem is. So don't just enter the team um, and say, oh, I see these things and it's pretty clear what's happening. Even if I do start thinking or, or listening to them for a few days or so, take your time uh, and um, see actually what you said in the sense of how, how are the interactions? Why do they think as they do? Um, and in order to find this out, you need more time than just a few days. Yeah, that's actually a great question. How have you explored that? Why do they think like they do question? Um, actually, you ask, um, you ask a lot of questions with respect to um, what is this good for what you do here? So um, what are the benefits or um, how comes? Um, I actually don't ask why you do things. Um, my experience here is that um, people might start to defend themselves a little bit. So it's more to ask, okay, what are the good reasons behind your current behavior, your current um, interaction style? Yeah. So uh, maybe one way to avoid asking a why question that triggers defensiveness is to start, when you did that, what was your goal? Mm -hmm. and, and this also helps us kind of mirror what just happened, because when we say, when you did that, we're also implicitly asking for validation that, yes, that's what I did. 
right? If not, they would say, no, that's not what I did. And then we can ask, all right, so from your perspective, what, what was it that you did first so that you get that clear? And then what was the goal? And I very often find that teams don't use very much the goal language. They, they talk about tasks, the things we need to do. And then because they forget this goal, then mm -hmm. when you ask why, well, because it's a task. Yeah, exactly. So, and if you ask for the goal, you can also ask for the intentions behind it. And um, that's maybe another another aspect um, that you have an attitude that you still always assume that there are good intentions intentions behind what they do. And if you have this att attitude, you will ask your questions differently because based on your attention uh, attitude, sorry, uh, your attitude and. Um, so what I also think it's good if you say, if you, if you join a team, um, bring yourself in such a mood that you, that you, that you have the patience, that you have this idea that all of these wonderful people have good intentions on how they work and what they do and, um, take your time to find out what's the goal behind it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Always assume there's good intentions and take exactly. your time to find out. Thank you very much for sharing that, Peter. You're welcome. Monday is about what we learn from our obstacles and our failures. But tomorrow is Team Tuesday here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. We explore teams and their journeys, the habits they develop that threaten their performance, how each of our guests help their teams evolve, and the one key lesson they learned from that experience. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.